Hey guys, it's Aaron BHA here bringing you a new video. So I ran across another cool uh, Docker container that I thought would be uh, kind of neat to showcase and show you guys. Um, so here we go. This one is called Ubiquity. Um, it's kind of like Plex, uh, but for books and comic books uh, and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. I use it for um, my comic book collection, and so uh, I think it works out pretty well. It basically gives you a web front end uh, for you to be able to access your uh, comic books or books uh, from anywhere uh, in your house. And you can read them right there on the web front end, or you can download them uh, to whatever device you have and read it with some sort of local client there on uh, your uh, device. So that's pretty cool. Let's check it out. So there, of course, is a lot of different ways to install this. You can run it straight on an Ubuntu server if you want, or um, there's even a has.io add-on. Um, if you want to run it straight off of that, it works pretty well, I think. I have not used it. It's not a real integration between Ubiquity and has.io. I didn't really feel the need to run it as a, an add-on uh, to Home Assistant. And since I already have a Docker server set up running a lot of other Docker containers, I thought uh, the Docker install was definitely the way to go. And that's the one that we're going to kind of look at today. Uh, so let's do a quick run through of everything we're going to cover in this video. So of course for starters, we're going to uh, install uh, Ubiquity in Docker. Uh, once we do that, we'll kind of go over the configuration and just kind of show you all the things that you can do with it. After that, we'll run through just adding some comic books um, to Ubiquity, just so you can see how easy and simple that is. Uh, after that, of course, we've been doing this a lot lately. We're going to add it into Heimdall, because they have the ability to add it in there. And then, of course, lastly, um, I'll just kind of show you what that looks like in action. Um, basically, we'll click on a comic book and show you what your different options are and stuff like that. So, pretty cool. Let's get started. So there's a couple of prerequisites that you will need for this to work properly. One of those is you want to create a directory on your Docker host machine that will store your Ubiquity config files. Um, so I have most of my other stuff just set up in my home directory on that machine. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. Of course, I already have mine set up. So as you can see here in my home directory, there is my uh, Ubiquity directory, which has the config files. But if you were going to create one right now, you would just do an mkdir Ubiquity, and that would create that directory for you. After that, you need to have some sort of folder or structure for all of your books, comic books, whatever type of files that you... Uh, you want to be able to view with Ubiquity. Uh, so I have created a directory uh, just in the root of my server here called Books. It has all of my comic book uh, collection in here and uh, you can see there's several different file structures there with the different books in it and stuff. So you need those two things in order for this to work. Once you have those created then of course you're ready to basically install it in Docker. Now this is uh, straight off of the documentation for this install, and this is kind of the setup that we're going to mirror uh, in uh, Portainer Stacks here. So we're going to go over here to Stacks. Uh, I'm going to click on the media stack that I have created that has some of my uh, containers for that. We'll click on Editor. And as you can see, I've already got it installed, but we'll kind of walk through the install here. So I called it Ubiquity. Uh, the container name is also Ubiquity. Again, you can call yours whatever you want. I set the restart to always. And then this is a, a standard Linux server image. So that's where we call that out here. And again, I'll have all this in the description below so that you can just copy and paste it. Next is volumes. We talked about the two that we had to create earlier. 
Um, one of them is, of course, your uh, config directory. So uh, for me, it's slash home slash Adrian slash ubiquity colon slash config. And the other one is the path to my comic books. I have it in the slash books directory. So it's slash books colon slash comics. And then you need one for your local time slash Etsy slash local time colon slash Etsy slash local time. Uh, and that's a read only, so we'll do colon RO at the end there. Next is the environment variables. So, of course, you're going to put in your PGID and your PUID. Those uh, should be probably 1,000. Um, unless you credit some other users, that's pretty much the default. And then you're going to want a environment variable for your time zone. So, of course, mine is America slash Chicago. So, it's TZ equals America slash Chicago. Now, there are two ports required for Ubiquity to run. Uh, one of them is for the just the client side where you will view the comic books. The other port is for the admin configuration as far as uh, scanning for new books and various settings and stuff that you can set there. Uh, those are 2202 for the client and 2203 for the admin. And so we have those built out here. Once you have all that done, then of course you would just hit update the stack it would update the stack and then we will be able to view the container. Now on another note, as I've said before, this is done in standard Docker Compose YAML. So if you're not using portainer stacks and you're still using Docker Compose, that's all fine and good. You can add this to your Docker Compose file and it will work out just fine. So let's click on Ubiquity here and see what it looks like. Everything looks pretty good. One thing to note, um, I did not create a directory or set up a directory for standard books or files. So as you can see here in the volumes, it has the ones that I created for the config and comics and then it, it created two Docker volumes for the other two. We'll go ahead and look at logs here, and there's all kinds of logs already being generated. Everything looks good. I think we're ready to move on to the next step. To access the admin console for Ubiquity, it's going to be uh, the IP of your Docker host machine. Uh, so for me, it's 10.10.10.4. .10 .10 um, and then the port number for the admin side was 2203. And then you're going to do slash Ubiquity slash admin. And when you first come up, it's going to ask you to create a password. Now, I already have mine created, so it's just wanting me to log in. But normally, for your first time access, it will prompt you and ask you to uh, create a password. Once you do that, it will bring you into the Ubiquity uh, admin console here. And as you can see, there's a few different tabs here. This is the general tab. It tells me how many books I currently have in total. Um, this is where I can set up an automatic scan. So if you want it to uh, scan regularly, you can select that and there's several different times how often you want it to scan and whatnot. Or uh, you can just choose to launch new scan where you'll scan it manually because as you can see, I don't have an automatic scan set up right now. So anytime I add books, I'm having to launch that scan manually. Uh, you can also add or create themes here. As you can see, I have one uh, configured. I like the dark mode, so I found a dark theme. I'll put a link in the description as well to where you can get some various themes if that's something you want to do. We'll jump over here to the comics tab. And as you can see, by default, it goes to slash comics. That's already defined in the Docker container. But you can change uh, the size of the thumbnails for each image if you want. 
or how many items per page. Uh, I've left it all the default. I don't see any reason to change it. And as you can see at the top, it supports CBZ, CBR, and PDF files for its comic book format. Uh, if you jump over to books, it's pretty much the same. In fact, at the top, you can see it supports EPUB, MOBI, uh, AZW, PDF, Deja Vu files. It supports all those different formats uh, for your book format. And then, of course, you can also set up the thumbnail size and items per page on that one as well. Next is raw files. Uh, again, this is where you can put some uh, folders and files out here uh, to be able to download them off of Ubiquity. I'm guessing there's not any kind of uh, default file format. It will take whatever files you put in there. Under security, you can create users if you want and uh, access it that way and limit access that way. I'm currently the only one using it, so I haven't set up any other users yet. Here's some advanced settings. Um, probably just going to take some trial and error to see if any of these need to be set for you. I've left everything in default, which, uh, of course, left all these unchecked. Everything's worked fine for me so far, so uh, again, Probably just a trial and error on whether or not you need to send any of those. And then last, of course, is the About page. Just kind of gives you some details about, uh, you know, Ubiquity itself and the current version that you're running. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step and add in some comic books. All right, so um, just to show you here, I've added in another directory uh, for the Walking Dead comic books. Um, I have not added these into Ubiquity yet. It's got like 100 comics in there, something like that. So we're going to pull this into Ubiquity. So if we go over to the admin console, and we're just going to hit Launch New Scan. And it'll take it a second. But as you can see, it pulled in 110 new comics. Um, that's everything that was in that Walking Dead directory. And if we jump over to the client side and hit comics, there's now a section for The Walking Dead. You click on that, it's got all of the Walking Dead comics that we just added. Uh, so that's pretty cool. But as you can see, it was super easy to get this added, so um, not very hard to do. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next step, and we'll get this added into Heimdall. All right, so of course I'll have the link uh, for the Heimdall video at the top if you haven't managed to catch that yet. Um, but of course we use Heimdall as just kind of a dashboard for various web front ends around the house. Um, for Ubiquity, since there's basically two different web front ends, one for the admin side, one for just viewing the comics, we're gonna add in both here uh, just to show you how you might do that. So we'll go here, we'll click the add. We'll do a search for Ubiquity, and of course it comes right up. We'll put in the path for the uh, client side, which will be 10.10.10.4 .10 .10 colon 2202 slash Ubiquity. Go ahead and save that. And then we'll create one more. We'll do the same thing. We'll call it Ubiquity Admin. And this one will be 10.10.10.4 .10 .10 colon 2203 slash ubiquity slash admin. We'll click on these just to show you that they do work. 
There's the uh, client side. You can click on that one. Let's uh, see. So there's the admin console. It came right up. We'll go back. I think we are ready to move on to that last step. All right, so there's not a lot more to it. Uh, if we were to click on comics here, and we'll just click on the Superman comic. You have the option to download or read now. Obviously, if you want to download it, you can view it with a local comic book reader or book reader, depending on what you're downloading. Or you can just choose to read now right there in the browser, which is what I like to do. And of course, as you can see, I clicked on it and it went full screen. In fact, it's way bigger than the window that I currently have open. But if you click here in the middle, it gives you some options to play around here. So you can say fit to height. This will uh, basically fit it inside the window size uh, that you're currently using. And then you can choose to have it split left to right or right to left or no split. I usually set mine to no split. That, but from there, then you can go ahead and just, you know, you start hitting the right arrow key, it'll scroll through the comic book just like you normally would. Works pretty well, pretty awesome. And of course, if you hit escape, it'll take you back up and let you select a different book. All right, but that's the end of the video, guys. Uh, you know, something a little bit different. Like I said, we've done Plex and stuff like that before, uh, but we haven't done anything with any kind of book reading, uh, and I thought this was a kind of a neat Docker container to play around with uh, if you guys are looking for something different. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So, of course, we started out by installing Ubiquity in Docker. Once we did that, we went over the configuration and just showed you what all that involved. Uh, after that, we went through the process of adding comic books into uh, Ubiquity. Uh, then we went through the setup of adding it to our Heimdall dashboard. And then, of course, lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. As always, I want to thank everybody for donating to my Buy Me a Coffee link. Every little bit helps. Uh, if you haven't had a chance, jump over to my uh, Spring merchandise page and check out all the Burns Home Automation merchandise. Uh, if you're looking for a VPN service, make sure to check out IP Vanish. I'll have the link in the description below so that you can check out that and see what they have to offer. And of course, don't forget about Robinhood. If you're interested in buying and selling stock or cryptocurrency, uh, you might want to check out Robinhood if you sign up with the link in the description below. You'll get some free stock. I'll get some free stock. It's a win-win for both of us. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.